breaking news. This is a blockbuster. I don't know if you've heard this before, but Kyle Dubas used to be the general manager of the Sioux Greyhounds. In all seriousness, you know I've been pretty grumpy at the Leafs since they lost in the playoffs, but despite all that, I gotta say, this deal, it's not bad. The trade is, the Toronto Maple Leafs acquire forward Jared McCann from the Pittsburgh Penguins, who used to be on the Sioux Greyhounds when Kyle Dubas was there, in exchange for prospect forward Philip Hollander and a seventh round pick in 2023. Now for those of you who are like, wait a sec, I don't remember the Leafs ever drafting Philip Hollander, that's because they didn't, they actually got him from the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Kasperi Kapanen deal. And just to remind you of what that deal was, the Pittsburgh Penguins acquire Pontus Aberg, Kasperi Kapanen, who was the most important part of that deal, and defensive prospect Jesper Lindgren, in exchange for David Warsawski, minor league defenseman, Evan Rodriguez, Philip Hollander, and a 2020 first round pick who ended up turning into Rodion Amirov. Couple odds and ends there. David Warsawski was actually traded to the Carolina Hurricanes last year by the Leafs, along with prospect Igor Korshkov for Alex Galchenyuk, a deal that worked out okay. Still haven't seen if Korshkov is gonna join the Hurricanes, and if he does, well, we'll reevaluate then. And also, Evan Rodriguez never ended up playing a game with the Leafs, he just went straight back to the Penguins on a new deal. And yet another part of that deal going back to the Penguins is Philip Hollander, but of course the Leafs get Jared McCann out of it. So if you want to split hairs, what Pittsburgh gets mostly stays the same. Pontus Aberg, Kasperi Kapanen, and Jesper Lindgren, but they also get to keep Evan Rodriguez and Philip Hollander. The Leafs don't keep Worsowski, they don't keep Rodriguez, they don't keep Hollander either, but out of that deal, they get the 15th overall pick in 2020, who was Rodion Amirov and Jared McCann. I'm not gonna lie, Jared McCann is a name that I just made fun of Kyle Dubas forgetting because he was another Sue Greyhounds guy, but he's a guy I've had my eye on for a while for the Leafs getting for a number of reasons. The main reason being that dude's a good player and he's only been getting better despite the fact that he's had kind of a disrupted development going from Vancouver to Florida to Pittsburgh and now Toronto in very few years. Last season, Jared McCann had 14 goals and 18 assists for 32 points. Now that's not going to make you jump out of your seat, but you got to remember, shortened season and he didn't even get to play the whole thing. It was in 43 games that he got that total. 14 goals and 32 points in 43 games is actually a 26 goal, 74 point pace. So for those of you who, like me, are sad that Zach Hyman is probably done with the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, that production would replace him and then some. McCann just turned 20. He's right smack dab in the middle of his prime, and I'm not here to tell you that he's going to score at a 70 plus point pace forever. He did very well last year in Pittsburgh, but is that exactly the player he is? Well, let's look. Jay Fresh Hockey, he's always tweeting out these wins above replacement charts, really popular. Jared McCann, acquired by Toronto, is a very good two way middle six forward who can play wing and center. He's got a good shot and has produced very effectively in the past few seasons. His defensive numbers at even strength are actually very good. What caught my eye there on that chart though, like let's say that McCann is supposed to be an Alex Kerfoot replacement, this guy doesn't really kill penalties. That to me is a bit of an issue. What's good though is the Leafs do need another center. Again, I'm just preparing myself mentally that the Leafs are going to lose Alexander Kerfoot to the Seattle Kraken. They need another center and if he doesn't play there or they acquire somebody else, he can also play left wing, another spot where the Leafs are uh, pretty thin. More feedback, this time from Jesse Marshall who covers the Penguins for The Athletic. To my Toronto friends, hi Jesse, I think what McCann found last year was the ability to direct the play obtain clear entries. You saw him be much more definitive with the puck last year and his decision making. Began to understand that he could drive play himself with zone entries. Only one player on the Penguins had more rush shots per 60 than McCann, which I think backs up what we saw on video. A higher number of entries per 60 with more fruitful shots as a result data per shutdown line. In a later tweet, Jesse also mentioned that in his opinion, he liked McCann more on the wing than at center. Then there was this from Reese Jessup, who actually worked for the Florida Panthers team, the, the famed computer boys who acquired Jared McCann from the Vancouver Canucks back in the day. Keeping in mind, this was yesterday when it was reported Jared McCann may be exposed to the Kraken by the Penguins. Letting Jared McCann walk to Seattle would be a tremendous mistake by Pittsburgh. He's grown into a strong two-way second line center with plus level finishing led the entire league in games above replacement per 60 minutes last season too, per evolving hockey. And then after he was dealt to the Leafs, he said this. Also, the Leafs making a really shrewd move today too. Kerfoot probably walks to Seattle now, and they likely expose Hall, 
whom I don't think is very good. Well, tell us how you really think, Reese. Uh, McCann is very well suited to play third line center with some wing flexibility for the Leafs. Again, everyone seems to be getting ready that Kerfoot is the one going to Seattle, and we'll explore that again in a minute. I like the McCann trade. I like having Jared McCann on my team. I like the Jared McCann cap hit, which is 2.945, I believe. Just say three. Just say three. It's still cheaper than Kerfoot, who makes 3.5. The one thing I would say is Kerfoot turned into a pretty effective penalty killer with the Leafs, and they didn't use him that way all the time. For me to really, really, really feel comfortable with this deal, I would like Jared McCann to kill penalties, or they're going to have to acquire somebody else. They need a full-time center on the penalty kill, for crying out loud. It's unbelievable. This is still an issue. Kerfoot was the first, at least semi-regular center on the penalty kill since, like, Par Lindholm. That's not okay. Although it should be pointed out that the Leafs' penalty kill, especially last season, not exactly the problem. Speaking of the Florida Panthers, I spoke to a fellow Steve, Steve Weirer, who used to be the assistant general manager of the Florida Panthers, part of the management group that brought Jared McCann to Florida. Here's what he had to say. Some discussion of Jared McCann reflects a narrative fallacy that pops up in hockey when we tell simple stories about complex events, like it's a red flag he's on his fourth team. Here's context to the complexity. We targeted and were able to trade for Jared in 2016 because we thought he was a fantastic prospect and offered a player who was widely coveted, that being Eric Branson. And in brackets, he puts, coincidentally, one person among many who vouched for his character after the trade was Kyle, meaning Kyle Dubas. Jared's subsequent trade from Florida should be seen in the context of shifting management priorities that impacted other moves around that time. The smart money is on him thriving on and off the ice in Toronto or anywhere else. Obviously a glowing review from a former NHL executive who used to have Jared McCann in his organization. I'd say that's pretty good. So, how does this affect the expansion draft? Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm confused. What I've been saying for a while is the way the Leafs had it, I thought they were going to protect four forwards, four D, one goalie. Because you can either do eight players of any kind, eight skaters of any kind, I should say, or seven forwards, three D, one goalie. And I've said it so many times, I could do it off the top of my head. Tavares, because you have to. Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, and William Nylander, that's easy. And on D, Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, TJ Brody, and one of Travis Dermott or Justin Hall. This is where it gets confusing, because a lot of people are like, well, surely the Leafs are going to protect seven forwards now. Okay, let's do that. Uh, Tavares, Matthews, Nylander, Marner, uh... McCann because they just got him I I guess Kerfoot and then who's the seventh guy Simmons Spezza you could make an argument that Seattle should go after Simmons but not with guys like Travis Dermott and Justin Hall and other guys available and obviously Jason Spezza is a non-option because he's just not gonna go what a legend like so much news is still coming across the news wire like I, I just had to make the decision to stop reading Twitter and make this video there's still so much Vancouver made a deal the Islanders made a deal the Ryan Ellis deal uh, apparently Tarasenko is gonna be exposed to Seattle to me you smell that side deal I think the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Seattle Kraken may have an understanding. I don't know what that understanding is. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know. But they may have one. This almost seems to be confirmation that the guy Seattle is taking is Kerfoot. Because unless you're planning on playing McCann and Kerfoot together, because they're both centers who can play wing, I, I, I don't get it. Most teams made deals today with a certain idea in mind, and that was not losing a good player to the Seattle Kraken for nothing. Take the Ryan Graves trade a couple days ago, the Colorado Avalanche sending him to the New Jersey Devils. Well, the Avs knew they were going to lose him, so they said, okay, let's make this deal and we'll try to do something else as well. At least we won't lose him for nothing. That might be Pittsburgh's motivation with this deal. Oh, we were gonna lose McCann anyway. We might as well deal him to the Leafs for something. Hey, we get a prospect that we know back. That's good. And also a seventh rounder. That's at least something. Usually that's the crystal clear part of the deal. You try to acquire good players, but there is an undeniable fact here 
there's this big scary monster who's going to pluck a player away from each and every team in the National Hockey League, except for the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, I'm not sure that should be allowed. It made sense when we all thought Vegas was going to be bad. There should be a condition that if you make the Final Four in three of your first four seasons, you don't get to do that anymore. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Jared McCann is a Toronto Maple Leaf. I assume he's going to continue to be a Toronto Maple Leaf, and they didn't just acquire him from the Pittsburgh Penguins and risk that Seattle's not going to take him. That that would be that would be that would be wild and highly criticizable of Kyle Dubas to do. I don't care how little you like him. Um I don't know if he's that bad. Couple odds and ends before we finish up here. The Leafs signed Joseph Wool, a prospect goaltender of theirs, to a one-year deal. He doesn't exactly have very good numbers in the minors, but this season he improved from the last. I'm a believer in this guy, but he is going to take a little while. And there are no expansion implications there. He is exempt. And lastly, Spencer Carberry is joining the Toronto Maple Leafs as an assistant coach. Obviously, this guy is good and knows what he's doing. It's always good to bring in guys who know what they're doing into your organization. Here's what confuses me, um, where, how big is the bench? Because according to the Toronto Maple Leafs team website, obviously Sheldon Keefe head coach, Manny Malhotra is still there, Paul McLean was sort of an eye in the sky, he wasn't on the bench this past season, you might remember he used to be head coach of the Sens, Steve Briere, uh, still the goaltending coach, Sam Kim, video and coaching coordinator, and Jordan Bean, video coordinator and statistical analyst. Now you might be saying, wait a sec, it feels like something's missing, and you're right, something is missing, because just five days ago, the Leafs themselves tweeted that they hired Dean Chenoweth as an assistant coach out of the WHL. So I'll Already, you got head coach Sheldon Keefe, you got Manny Malhotra who was on the bench last season, Paul McLean who was the eye in the sky, Dean Chenoweth who you just hired five days ago, and now, uh, geez, how many names, what is this guy's name? Spencer Carberry is the guy's name. So how many, who's gonna be on the bench? Again, all worthwhile questions, but bringing in someone who is obviously good at coaching is always good for your team. So, what do you think of this deal? Leave a comment in the comment box down below, or if you got anything to say about Joseph Wool or the assistant coaching situation, whatever, or especially Seattle. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell your friends. I don't know if you heard all that groaning off camera. Iggy, I'm going to take you for a walk now, okay? I didn't ask them to make a trade. They just sort of made one. I love you.